Hello, hello, it's Wednesday again, and uh, today we're going to do another watercolor live. This morning I thought I would do a uh, pumpkin. Seems seasonal, right? So I thought I would um, uh, paint that and, and get some really nice fall color involved here. And uh, so um, if you are joining, Make sure that you um, you check out all the other videos that I've been doing over the last several months. Um, you can check those out on my channel. Uh, you can see the subscribe below if you want to check those out. And um, before I begin, I guess if uh, if you're just joining in, make sure that you say where you're from. And uh, if you know a friend that you think would might might like to watch this, then be sure and invite them to come along. So, I will jump right in, and uh, I'll start with my drawing. Okay, let me just get my other image up here. Okay, so we have um, this, this really nice uh, pumpkin uh, scene that I have. I took this last year. And uh, I'm going to draw this out really, really kind of roughly here. Okay. So it's filling up about that much of my uh, paper. Whoops. I'm draw whenever I start drawing for my watercolors, I draw this very, very lightly to start with, but then I um, then I'll darken up my uh, lines as I go. You know, once I've established that okay, my I'm happy with the way things are going, and my drawing looks the way I want it, then I will um, darken up my lines. Now the one thing I love about this particular pumpkin is the uh, that that twisted twisted um, stem that it's got. Uh, that's probably my favorite part. So I'm going to uh, really try to emphasize this this twisting motion here. Maybe angle that a little bit more. So I draw lightly and then once I kind of have every, all the elements in place, only then will I start coming in and really darkening up my lines a bit so that, so that I know which ones are the ones that I'm really going to work from. Here in Canada, we have our Thanksgiving weekend coming up, so I thought this would be a this would be a really good um, uh, subject to be painting. I I thought about doing some gourds. I know I had a request for gourds, and uh, I wanted to do gourds. I actually have some dried gourds, which which are really kind of fun because they have all these uh, lumps and bumps and warts and unusual shapes, goosenecks, and, and all kinds of things going on with them. And uh, so they can be really interesting. But uh, the ones that I have are actually dried gourds, and they don't have any color left in them. So I thought, ah, I'm going to use this reference picture that I had taken last year. So I'm just trying to get the the uh, indents of the pumpkin put in here. So you know, those little shapes, these shapes here, everything's got a little bit of a curve to it. And everything radiates from the stem pretty much. Okay. Now there's a few flowers and things in here and I'm going to indicate those just basically with some with a few circles because I am not going to be 
spending a lot of time doing details on flowers and things. So I just want to show a couple of a um, couple of blossoms just sort of for scale so I know what size to make them. So I'm just doing a couple of light oval circles uh, to indicate that. Uh, this looks like a, a barrel back here, but I'm sure not going to do too much with that. Just a barrel full of flowers or something. I think I took this picture at the Royal Botanical Gardens uh, in Burlington. And uh, they always have a really nice um, display of, of uh, fall stuff. Nice place to go on a day like today. It's, it's quite, uh, quite a uh, kind of an overcast, cool, damp sort of day. So um, it... Uh, it's a great place to go because you can, uh, they've got this really nice gazebo where you can go inside to sketch and uh, you might catch something like this. Of course they have all the protocols and stuff in place now so you, in Ontario we have to show proof of double vaccination and that sort of stuff but uh, you know it's all for the good of everybody and you do what you do got to do. And so let me see here, I want to really try to emphasize some of these shapes here these I want them to really look like they're indented here so I'm gonna darken this up a little bit now that I'm feeling a little more confident about my drawing and the placement of everything now I can come in and really get it sort of hammered in there not I don't like to do my drawing too dark, especially if I'm using a lot of transparent color because that you know the darker the line, the more chance of the pencil lines showing through. And I don't know, pencil lines don't bother me too much, but I know they bother some people. So if you're one of those people that uh, really has trouble with uh, seeing pencil lines in your painting, then you might want to do these a little bit lighter. But I don't mind pencil lines. I find that they, they're sort of like the trademark uh, of something that's been handmade. Okay, so this is a pretty big pumpkin here. I'm going to bring this out here a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm good with that. I'm going to now switch over this uh, and I will explain what paper and everything that I'm working on just to say as soon as I say good morning to Leticia from Texas, Debbie from Kitchener, Patricia from London, oh, Mary from Atlanta, Georgia, um, Dorothy from California, and uh, Melody from Sarnia. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I know a lot of you are regulars and I really appreciate it. Um, I come because I show up because you show up. <laughs> kind of, that's kind of how it works. All right. So you can see over here on the right hand side, I've got my palette. I have got um, all my paints are pretty dried. Actually, I should have softened them up. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some clean water to some of my colors here so that they will get nice and creamy. I want to soften them up. I should have cleaned my palette before I started here today, but oh well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wet all of this. I may not use all of these colors, but I'm wetting it all anyway. And I, as you can see, I put quite a generous. You can see my dropper. Um, maybe I can enlarge this so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, let me see. So for my palette, I am putting a substantial amount of water in these in order for the paint to really soften. I know some people will use like a sprayer or something like that to soften up their paint. Personally, I find that only, only softens up the skin, like the, the outer layer of the paint. So I actually put quite a bit in there and give it a little time to soak in. 
Most of my paints that I'll be using are Da Vinci. I do have some uh, Winsor Newton. I also have uh, some Core, some Daniel Smith. Lots of good brands out there. Uh, the one thing I do not have on my palette though is uh, student grade paint. So the reason I don't like student grade paint is because first of all, um, although it has the same types of pigments, it also has a lot of fillers. So in order to get my rich colors, um, I'm using artist quality so that uh, I can get more pigment and less filler. Um, I find that if I am using student quality paint, uh, they're not always as light fast, which means that they can fade over time or change color. They, um, I, I end up using more paint just because I'm trying to get my color a little richer. Uh, so they just, I mean, they call it student grade and it, it kind of implies that the, um, um, kind of implies that the, um, you know, that they're good paints to be using for, uh, for learning. But personally, I think that that's, uh, misleading because it's a little harder to learn with with paint that doesn't have enough pigment and so on. So, good morning Sue. Hi Verna. Hi Miriam. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Okay, so um, I'm going to shrink down this uh, palette again here and place it over here in the corner. A little smaller. All right, so you'll be able to watch what I'm doing, but um, uh, it's off to the side there. Now my paper, I have stretched some uh, arches, 140 pound cold press paper. I um, wet it, stapled it down wet, let it dry, and then taped it. My brushes I'm using are mainly squirrel hair brushes natural hair brushes, but synthetic brushes would work fine too. Uh, you're just going to have to load them up with uh, lots of color. Okay, I think I can zoom in a little bit here. So, um, whoop, that's a little bit much. How about that? Okay, so now I'm a little closer. That'll work out. Um, I'll be using my screen. I'm actually looking at my screen for the image, uh, just like you are. Uh, that way I'll get some nice bright colors. If if I have some areas where it's, you know, I've got a lot of pencil lines that I don't want or something like that, I will usually use a kneaded eraser. Um, uh, and, you know, you can either roll it. And the reason I like a kneaded eraser is because you don't have to use this sort of emotion. You can just basically roll it on there and it'll lighten up the lighter lines. Um, so, why is that important? It's because it doesn't abrase the paper. Right? It's not hurting the paper in any way or affecting the surface quality. Whereas if I took a, a regular eraser and I'm rubbing back and forth, that does make a difference. So I like to use a kneaded eraser for, um, for this type of thing. So I'm going to start right in on the pumpkin itself. Um, and I will do the background last. And uh, we got people from all over the place, all over the continent today. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you. East Coast, West Coast, North, South. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so um, uh, let me see here. I'm just going to firm up this line a little bit more. There, that'll do. doesn't have to be identical to the picture. I mean, I'm close enough here. Now, the one thing about reds in watercolor um, that I have found is that they often uh, will look dull. 
So what I do to punch up my reds or oranges and things like that is I'll put a nice lively yellow underneath. So I'm going to take some bright yellow here. This one is Ariolan. Actually, maybe I'll use a little gamboge as well. Gamboge is a little warmer yellow. Actually, I'll stir them together and get a nice sort of medium yellow here. And I'm going to go in wherever my pumpkin is here. And uh, I'm going to get some really good bright orange that I'm or yellows that I'm going to place underneath my my orange so that it gets really lively. I do find oranges, reds, things like that can dull down a lot in watercolor without this vibrant glow underneath. So this is what I'm adding in here is I'm adding in glow. So I'm just working on dry here um, and just putting it in quickly so that I don't get brush marks or anything like that. Need to get a little more here. And I'm just going to get this really nice lively yellow underneath all of this. So the temptation is to just take your Mix up an orange and start painting orange, but uh, I do find that this does make a difference, uh, this yellow. And to put it on in layers, rather than uh, just mixing your yellow into a red and making an orange, I do find this makes a difference, making sure that this uh, bright color comes through. Uh, the yellow that I'm putting down is a transparent color. You can see my pencil lines through it very easily. It's allowing a lot of the white paper to shine through, which is really important for capturing lighter areas in your painting. Um, that's the beautiful thing about um, watercolor and especially from using transparent watercolor is that you get that, that glowing, this is your light source, your white paper, and it, it kind of shines through your painting. All right, so I, don't think I'm going to need to wait for this to dry. I'm just going to take some more yellow here and I'm going to take a nice orangey red. Now I'm going to use one called Rose Door, but Rose Door is a lot like Scarlet Lake and you can see by itself it's quite an orangey red. Let's see here get a little bit more and I'm going to actually mix that in here and that's going to give me a nice sort of lively orange. I'm going to mix a pretty big puddle of this because I have quite a bit of area that I need to work in. This is gamboge. This is a hue that I'm using, a gamboge hue, which means that it's a mixture so it's not uh, pure gamboge. Um, in Da Vinci this is a pretty bright yellow. So I want to make sure this is well stirred up and I've got kind of a, uh, a golden orange here. A golden orange and then I will build up um, to some other uh, colors as well. Now I'm, I've got lots of paper towel beside me here. Let me slide this over a bit and you'll see that um, I'm, I'll be blotting a fair bit as I'm applying so that I can control the amount of water in my brush. Good morning, Liz. Hi, Anne. Uh, oh, you keep forgetting. Oh, you need to set that bell icon. Uh, the bell icon, uh, if, you, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel um, below the videos, or if you just put in my name, Shelley Pryor Fine Art, into YouTube, you'll find me, and um, then there's like a, usually a red button that says subscribe, subscribe, and then there's a bell. It looks like just looks like a little bell, and that will remind you when I'm live. Oh, you tried the goo gone on a brush? Okay, Ian says she tried the goo gone um, on a brush to get masking fluid out, which I talked about last week. 
and it came out. I know it's amazing, isn't it? It just came out as good as new. All right, so that's that's my orange color here, and uh, I'm just going to start jumping in, and I am I'm not going to just sort of do everything like a formula. Like if I if I go on the right hand side of every line, that's not going to work. I have to look for everything that I am. Um, that everything, every place where I'm going to be putting this. So I see, you know, it's a little darker back here. It's a little darker here. And along here. Now, the yellow might be dry. And if it is, it's not a big deal. I just rinse my brush and blot. Okay and just soften what I put down. All right, and I'm only touching the edge of what I put down, and that's going to give me a little bit of volume. Now, I'm gonna be building up on this a few times. That's how I'm gonna get the richness of this, the fullness of this uh, pumpkin. I'm, so I'm gonna get a few layers going on in here. And I'm slowly going to build this up till my values become a little bit more uh, rich and intense. So I just put clean water here to fill that in. And you can see that there's a lot of yellow still showing, and that's fine. Um, gets pretty dark on this side. Big. I really spread the bristles of my brush to uh, to get those larger sections. Maybe I'll even go into this darker orange and get some of that in there. You can see how fluid my paint is here. I'm going to rinse blot my brush. You see how I blot my brush? That's on its side, not the tip. So I'm blotting the side of my brush. And I'm going to come in to soften some of this. So we're getting volume already, and uh, and then when as we build up more and more layers, this is going to get even more intense. Now there, there's kind of a little bit of a dark area in here, a little bit right in here. So I'm going to start off with this kind of orange, but I'll be sh probably shifting some of these colors a little bit. Um, there's a nice sort of line that goes down here. And it's definitely dark down in this section. Let's use that darker orange. Get down in there. Rinse and blot. And then I'll just come in to soften the edges of these. Rinsing and blotting again before I go to the next section. Because if I take, if I lift my brush and go up here, I'll transfer that dark color up here. So I need to rinse if I'm going back up into a light area. Got to remember those things. Okay. I'm gonna drop a little bit more dark in there. I know that as and you know, I'm sure, that as watercolor dries, it gets lighter. So sometimes you need to put it in a little bit darker than you actually want to end up with. This next section, hmm, let me see, we've got a little bit of dark up here. 
And now this is coming down <clears throat> this uh, sort of crease. Well, they probably have a, a word for these, section of the pumpkin. Light, a little lighter in this area here, so I'm just going to rinse my brush and paint clean water in this section, which when I touch the orange, it will blend in. The reason I need to blot my brush is because if I don't, what happens when I go into my water and I have a brush full of water? And I come back in here, I'll create a blossom. I'm not after blossoms. So I'm going to get a little more color going here. I think I'm getting a little on the low side. All right. So I want to make sure when I'm adding color into a wet surface that I am making sure that the paint I'm adding in is not wet or wetter than the um, the paper itself. That's where the blossoms will come in. They will come from having a brush that's too wet. Yep. Okay, so these wonderful transitions between this, this golden yellow and the uh, red, that orangey red is giving me uh, volume. It's creating the, the segments of the pumpkin. Okay, so I'm looking here. There's kind of a dark one that comes up here. Actually, this whole corner is a bit dark. And, you know, you, I'm not being very tight or specific about things yet. I mean, these big sections, I can pretty well um, just paint them in. Paint them in like, like big pieces. Not worry about the subtleties yet. The subtleties will come with the, with the uh, subsequent layers and, and the final details. So I don't need to worry about all that stuff. Oh, that, I didn't blot my brush there. Don't want to create a blossom, so I'm going to pull up some of that extra moisture before it creates a blossom. Okay, I'm going to go into this dark and come right into that damp paint with my brush well blotted. See, I can come in and paint in the wet surface like that. This over here is actually dry, so I can paint in dry, but I can also paint in wet. And I know that that's going to keep blending, but you see how, how significant that yellow is underneath this reddish orange color, um, that my pumpkin is alive, it's really glowing. And the yellow is what's creating that. So uh, that was the big, that's the big uh, secret here to this, uh, to this pumpkin is getting the, that bright yellow underneath so that you don't get this flat looking color. All right, I'm going to carry on. My brush is blotted now. Coming into my wet paint, and it's pretty dark right up in here by the stem. Got a couple of blobs of color there. Okay, so coming in here, getting some really nice darks along that seam there where that crease is. I'm going to rinse my brush and clean water in here. I can always darken down this pumpkin. It doesn't have to be this yellow, but if I don't have the that glow, that liveliness to this pumpkin, um, it won't be as three-dimensional and it won't be as lively looking. So get some nice dark seams in there. It's 
working out okay. Now I'm just going to keep going here. My big creaky chair. It's a new chair too, so shouldn't be creaking. I haven't, ha haven't even had it a year yet. These are smaller sections, so I'm working a little bit more with the tip of my brush. This brush, by the way, is a number 10. Um, I believe I put, I think I put the, uh, the brushes that I'm using, I believe I put that in the description below, but if I forgot, then I will check back and uh, add that in. Um, I bought these online. They weren't very expensive, uh, but I do like them. Okay, so as I said, this, this orangey red color here is called um, Rose Door, but it uh, it's a lot like Scarlet Lake. It's also a lot like Cad Red, uh, but the reason I'm not liking Cad Red for this kind of an application is because cadmium colors um, are generally opaque so they won't show that group they'll cover up that glow underneath rather than allowing it to come through the paint remember what I said at the beginning about the the light source in your painting is actually your paper you've already got your light so I want to get talking and forget about painting here um, so that's important uh, to uh, make sure that the colors you glaze on top have um, at least some level of, of transparency. You know, there's tra totally, like, well, there's no such thing as totally transparent color. It would be colorless. But um, there, there's transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, opaque, and... Um, so some will let the light through, some will not. Now I'm going to come, I'm just, I'm going to go around my pumpkin again, and I'm going to build up more orange, more shadows, and I'm just kind of going clockwise around my pumpkin here. And if... Things are dry like they are here. You can see I've got hard edges here. I just soften them as I go. So rinse, blot, and get that paint moving. Could wet the area first and drop the color in. That's another option. So I can come in and add it in like this. Lot my brush there. Okay, so I'm getting I'm getting more and more red and and that's coming in and get, getting this the more depth in some of those creases. I'm gonna use some clean water here. Still a blotted brush because I don't want to have too many um, I don't want to have blossoms happening. little pile of paper towels will be pretty wet by the time it's already pretty wet I can probably wring it out some people use a sponge for for blotting their brush uh, a, a sponge you can definitely wring out uh, you will have to also wash the paint out of it but some people will use a sponge to uh, blot their brush and that works very well as as well so I'm going to wet this section here. And some of this paint's still a little wet. I can tell it is moving a bit, so I need to get right in there with some new color here. I'm 
really start building it up. So if I get right up on the tiptoe of my brush, I can create extra little, like I can actually create little lines. You know, but it all depends on the, the dampness of the surface, whether you can get away with that. But also, what's in my brush is blotted so that my brush isn't too wet. If I put down really wet, flowy paint, flowing paint, it's not going to stay where I put it. So I have to make sure this brush is blotted. Um, okay, so this is getting pretty, uh, pretty rich. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more here. Um, I'm going to come into this section. Normally I would wait for everything to dry, but since we're live and I'm trying to get her done, I'm going to keep going. Um, you could definitely wait for these layers to dry and then just basically repeat the first layers. But I'm doing okay, I think. It's working out all right for me. But every once in a while I get a crumble. My, my red is crumbling a little bit. I didn't stir it in well enough. i just pick that out. All right, so you can see what a lively red that is and how, how round that pumpkin looks because where, where the light hits the pumpkin, um, you're going to have more warmth. Where the shadows are going to be, now we're not done with the shadows yet because we're going to start coming in with some warm or some cooler colors for some of the deeper shadows. Good morning, Sharon. Uh, hi, Diana. Um, sorry. Uh, Liz. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, make sure you uh, let your friends know that I have these every Wednesday because if nobody shows up, there's no point. No point in my being here. So I'm just wetting this section again. Trying not to spread around my first color there too much. Uh, I'm going to come in here with a little bit more red. Come into my darker orange. Another blob there. Don't play with things too much because um, that's when brush marks will happen. You'll start lifting that under under layer, and uh, don't want that happening. All right, next section. I'm gonna jump right in here. Try to work quickly here. I don't lose you. I should give you a bonus for everybody who stays till the end. I should give you a bonus. Maybe a giveaway or something. How about that? Anybody who's still still here at the end can come and get this painting. How's that? Well, I guess you can't come and get the painting if you're far away. <laughs> I guess that doesn't work. Uh, Okay, well, maybe I can mail it out if, uh, if you stick around to the end. That you might want to share with your friends. Of course, you might want to stick around to the end to see if you actually like it. <laughs> that would be something if you stuck around to the end and then you didn't even like the painting. <laughs> but I will try to do something nice. All right. 
right, so this is getting richer and richer, and I'm just going to wet this last little section here because it's small. All right, I'm going to come in with my just my red here and start deepening some of those shadows. There we go. All right. This could be a little darker down here. Now if I'm coming into an area that's wet, I really do have to make sure my brush doesn't have excess moisture or I'll be in trouble. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so we've got some pretty good uh, glow happening here. I probably am not going to leave all of this uh, yellow showing but um, but it's really good to uh, it's really good to um, have it underneath because it actually does radiate through your paint um, good morning Pat uh, share my sketch my sketch I sketched it right on the paper that I'm painting on maybe I can zoom in a little bit I might be able to do that um, for these flowers, I just did circles. There you go. Um, I did more detail on the pumpkin itself, especially this uh, this really cool stem. All right, so I'm going to leave this to dry. I'm going to wipe off my edges here. I always wipe off the tape because it takes longer for the paint to dry on the tape and I don't want it to get back onto my painting because that'll create blossoms. Alright, so um, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can speed this up because I'm not sure where I can work exactly. I'll just keep going. Um, all right, so for this stem, I'm going to be mixing up, it's almost got, it's brown, it, it's brown, but it's almost on the greenish gray kind of thing. Um, oh, as a bonus, I see what you're saying. Yes, I could do that for sure. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I am going to go with um, a greenish gray. How am I going to mix that up? Well, if I take, if I make a green, okay, so I'll make a green with cobalt blue and my gamboge, right? Makes kind of an ugly green. Now, to that, if I add that same uh, rose door, that orange type of red. And I keep saying orange type of red because um, to make your pumpkin with a pinky red would not work out very well because it would already go a little bit dull. Because a pinky red is already leaning towards the, the cooler spectrum of your color wheel. So the that would end up... Um, um, making your yellows or your orange less less lively. All right, so, but you can see by I by adding the orange red to this, it has made kind of a brown, and it's almost a greenish brown because I put that yellow in there too. So I've got this sort of greenish brown, and I'm thinking that's pretty good for my for my stem. All right, so the stem, uh, there's none of it that's actually white, white. So I'm gonna start off with just a, a light wash in here. Um, I'm gonna leave the top of it and go a little lighter on the top. But for this, I will come in with this gr greenish brown, just a light value. Try not to make blossoms, but hopefully that doesn't happen. All 
If I hit orange paint that's wet, I might end up with a blossom, so I'll have to be extra careful here. I think I'm all right. So a nice brush full of, of greenish brown paint. This will be the lighter value in the stem. I want to keep this value light because I need to create shape on top of it. I'm going to thin it even more for the top. Uh, so this top part here is going to be extra diluted color. Let's pull a little bit more of that off so I actually have another uh, another light layer here. And um, Okay, so now I'm going to mix up a little bit more green. Mix my green first. And the reason I'm mixing up more instead of just going into what I already made is because this is really diluted. So I need to make sure that I've got something thicker. There's my green. Add my red. Maybe a little more blue. Trying not to mess up my palette here. Like dirty up my my colors. Don't think I'm gonna need that much red, so. brush fell apart. Didn't fall apart. It's supposed to come apart. This is actually a travel brush that I'm using. So uh, it um, it's designed to come apart so you can put this on the cap. Like I don't want to do it because it's got paint on it, but I, you actually put the lid on. And uh, it's a great little brush. Um, All right, so there's a little bit darker value, so very similar to what I just had, but less water. So I'm blotting my brush, and I'm going to start looking for the, the darker values in here and following that contour of, the, of that stem. And it kind of comes down in lines. Actually, there's some parts of this that actually look a little bit blue. I'm going to use some blue. That's probably some reflected light uh, from, the, from the sky. So I'm going to actually use some blue in here too. Because that's interesting. To change, if you can change a color in your painting and uh, notice little color shifts like that, it will make your painting so interesting. Do that whenever you can. Stop looking up. I keep looking at my reference to see, okay, what exactly is happening here? Um, Right? You really want to get that sort of twisty feeling to this, uh, to this uh, stem. Oh, I did kind of an outline thing there. Didn't like that. Oh, well. So now I'm going to, I want to get that rough texture here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to paint with kind of the side of my bristles. And what that does, if my brush is, is fairly dry, which it is, you can see, my brush is pretty dry. And if I just sort of skim it across the paper, I get this great sort of coarse texture. 
So this is dry brushing that I can come in here with. And it's just that brush without very much color that is skimming across the surface of the paper and giving me that great sort of roughened up texture. Uh, there's a little bit of that up, up here on the top as well. And you can see it just catches the, the texture of the paper and, and gives me that really nice texture. All right. So um, I'm going to leave that a little while and um, I'm maybe going to move on to some of the flowers and things that are around the outside. And uh, what I'd like to do is I want to keep these, um, the detail in this, I want them to look like flowers, but I don't want to detail them because they're not the, they're not the star of the show. They're, these, these flowers back here, they're ambiance. <laughs> they're the, uh, the, the. Uh, this is the star and the others are just the other actors. So, um, I'm going to need to do some uh, negative painting for this. I need some little bit of blue in my um, shapes here. But I'm going to wet a section. Let me see here. I'm going to use this big, this is a bigger squirrel hair brush. This one is a number four. So this one's a 10 and this one's a four. <laughs> you know, it's like dress sizes when you buy a dress. Shouldn't like the, shouldn't the four be smaller than the 10? You know, you can never always, you can never tell exactly what the colors really are or what the sizes really are. You kind of just go by how it looks, right? But, uh, all right, so I'm gonna wet clean water back here because I want I want my flowers to sort of disappear as they get towards the edges of my painting and you know to the corners in particular. So I just want to get a little bit of you know some of these areas here I'll leave those a bit dry but um, out here at the corners I just want to keep that very very loose. So I'm going to just put in a few bits of uh, blue that will kind of show the shading on the flowers. Obviously not a lot of detail. Uh, just a little hint here and there. Um, there are some yellow centers. I'm going to go into that. Uh, gamboge that I used earlier and put some of those in just little hints of it and you can see when I go into the wet stuff up here this is a little bit drier here but when I get up into this wet area it's all sort of blending and bleeding and it looks like it's kind of fading away right so that's kind of the effect I'm looking for, is that fade away effect. Um, maybe a little bit more blue as well. And you're thinking, well, I don't see any blue. <laughs> but um, but there are there is going to be a bit of shading on the flowers. It'll be hardly noticeable by the time I get this dark background in, but there will actually be a little shading to make the flowers look like they have some form. So just a few little bits here and there. Um, I'm going to come down to these yellow ones down here now and I'm going to use the gamboge for that. I'm going to dilute it because I want some light values here. These, these will be lighter. So this will definitely tie into what we did before. All right, so lots of lots of yellow down in here. I will go into a little bit of that rose door, that orangey red 
and I will create the shadows for the yellow flowers with this uh, with this orangey red because the orangey red um, like in yellow's the oddball yeah often the shadows like to cool things down is what you would do in a shadow but in yellow the shadows are usually warmer so I need to uh, create uh, some warmth in these shadows so I'm using the kind of the tip of my brush here to get some shape into these flowers just little dabbles where I can see them uh, This one I kind of have to paint around negative because it, uh, when I say negative, I mean I have to try to create the, the petals of this little flower by painting around them. Okay, so then there's going to be some darks in here as well. So I'm going to take um, a little bit more of this red, get it a little bit deeper along this edge. First I'm going to go warm and then I'm going to go cool, but uh, it'll turn quite dark in some of these sections. All right, so then I'll go cool. So what happens when I take an orangey red and its complement, which is blue, is this is going to get really dark. It will almost look black. Okay, so you can see that adding that in, those two colors together, uh, gives me a really good dark. So I can take, I can actually take those two colors, mix them together. Get a pretty good dark. I can also come in and, um, like that's a little bit on the purple, leaning towards purple, so I could bring in a little yellow to dull it even further. But I'm going to go a little bit more blue, and I want to make sure this isn't as um, diluted. Um, I, uh, I want to make sure that it's got less water in it, but before I do that, I guess I better get some greens in there. Let's let's take this blue and yellow here and we'll get some greens going before we start adding in the extra darks in the background. I'm going to go into this other yellow, make a more lively green. Let's see. That's a pretty good green. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to come in and uh, tuck in. Now again, this is gonna be negative painting here, and I've really filled up my brush, but I'm going to tuck in uh, these greens around the these uh, flowers. So some of it will bleed because some of these areas are still really wet and I'm totally okay with that. That's just going to make it look sort of some of it in focus, some of it out of focus. Um, I'm good with that.
You see how I'm creating the petals by painting around them? Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, we'll pretend there's another one there. And then we're going to get back up into some of this wet area here. And things are going to start to get a little bit dense up in here, so maybe just tuck in a few little darks. And the idea of those flowers continuing will kind of be automatic. All right, so I'm just going to fill in some of this. I'm just going to fill this in across to the barrel. There we go. And if I want to detail some of these a little bit more, I can always come in and do more. That's detailing's easy. It's getting it wet and working while it's wet that's the trickier part. Okay, so a little bit, a couple of little hints of detail up in here. There. Does that look like a bouquet of flowers? Without a lot of detail? Something like that. Alright, so then there's some darks in here. All right, so I'm going to come into this puddle here and uh, I'm going to add in some extra darks. So this puddle is a little bit on the reddish side. So when I add that to my green, maybe get some more blue in there too. Uh, when I add that to my green, it's all going to get darker. So just touching it in, letting it flow. Lots of big dark sections up in here. If I kind of dot in there, that's going to look like plants. But the plants are out of focus, so I can create illusions. It's amazing how if you don't spell it out for the viewer, they figure it out anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go a little more red here for this uh, barrel. And I'm going to do a light wash along here. And it'll bleed into my greens, and that's fine. I actually kind of want it out of focus, so if it bleeds together with that green, I'm not... Uh, I actually, I think that's a good idea, so. Okay. My water is getting pretty dirty. Give me one second here, I'm gonna ship that out. clean water. It's getting pretty murky there. And I'm going to take, I'm going to come back to my pumpkin. It's still, it's still damp. It's still damp, so I'm, I'm playing with fire here a little bit, but um, I'm going to see if I can come in and darken up a few of these uh, shadows on the pumpkin itself. Um, no, I think I'm going to mess it up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dryer and uh, bear with me a minute. Now, just so you don't have to put your fingers in your ears, I'm going to mute myself. So <laughs> I'll be right back.
Okay, so my paper has, it's still a little damp up here, but I'm working up there right now, so I'm not too worried about it. I wanted to work down here on the pumpkin. My paper feels flat again, so I know that it's dry, not just on the surface, but through the layers. And uh, so that way I can come in and, uh, and wet the pumpkin without disturbing the first layer. So I'm just going to wet it all. And I'm going to start coming in with some cooler shades now. More of a, a brown actually will have a little bit of blue in it. So if I take that orange and I add blue to it, it will turn into a brown, as you saw up here. I'm working with a pretty limited palette here, I think. Oh, well, I've used two yellows, only one red, and only one blue so far. Um, but I probably will come in with something extra dark at the end, uh, just so I can get, get there a little faster. All right, so I'm going to come in. I've got kind of a mixture, this uh, lots of orange in this here. Let's get a little bit more gamboge. Really get a nice good orange going on here. Add a little bit of blue to it and that will get a little bit duller. Now you're thinking, okay, well I don't want my shadows dull, but yes, sometimes that you do need the dull to make the other things more vibrant. So Coming in, let's see what we have here. Okay, so this is, now that this is a little cooler, this is an orange, still an orange, but it's a little cooler. And I can get, um, make sure I blot my brush, I can get a little bit more of the deeper shadows in this pumpkin as, as the shape sort of rounds down into the darker areas, I can get a little bit darker. And that, sh that edge will almost start to go away, the edge of the pumpkin. So it won't be as well defined. And that's what happens in shadows, is sometimes, sometimes the edges aren't as visible. Um, okay, so let's do a roll, roll call. Who is still with me here? <laughs> who's still with me? Who's in, who's the contenders for the, uh, <laughs> for this painting when it's done? Um, you know what else I want to hear from you is what to do next week. <laughs> I was like, I'm always trying to think, what should I be doing? What should I, what do, what do they want to see? And when you can just tell me <laughs> what you want to see, you know, if you want to see a glass or if you want to see an animal or a bird or a still life or a landscape or a sky or water or waves or, oh gosh, you know, the possibilities are endless. All right, so I'm coming in, these are these are giving them my extra darks, dulling down some of the deepest areas. Blot my brush so it doesn't get too, uh, doesn't spread out more than I want it to. <laughs> Thanks, Irene. <laughs> Just, okay, so. If you're here, you're going to have to, uh, um, I don't know, message me on Facebook or something. I don't know. <laughs> Some people are here, but they don't know how to get into the, into the comment section of the chat. I don't know why that happens for some people. Does anybody know why that happens? Some people cannot see the, uh, 
the chat box. I don't know why. Maybe it's the device they're on. I don't know. I'm not that techie that I, I know the reasons for these things. I'm sure there's some sort of techie guru YouTube expert out there somewhere who knows, but it's not me. All right. So there's lots of really cool darker shadows that kind of come along the edges of these so I can I can start adding more in here and I had said you know that there was some some darker shadows in a few places that looked a little bit on the bluish side and and this is this is it now it doesn't look exactly bluish although there is blue in this color so just relatively speaking it looks more blue <laughs> Hi, Margo. Oh, awesome. Uh, oh, a breaking wave. That'd be awesome, Debbie. Thank you. Uh, seashells or tabby cat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did a tuxedo cat a little while back. Um, and Irene, I got your message. I, I know you're here. All right, I guess I'm going to have to put names in a hat at the end because I can't give the same painting to everybody. But uh... oh, if you oh, okay. So if you watch if you watch YouTube on your TV, you don't get the chat box. I don't think she's watching on TV, but uh, um... <laughs> thank you, Verna. Awesome. So waves, or or uh, what was it? Waves, or seashells, or tabby cat. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look through all of this, make sure I didn't miss any of these uh, great ideas for for demos. Um, Now, one thing I might do is, like, mine Mine looks a little bit too technicolor, uh, is I may put a unifying wash over all of this at the end. But that whole idea of putting the that gold and yellow underneath is to give me some glow to that pumpkin, to give me that vibrancy of that orange. A chrysanthemum. Oh, yes, that would... <laughs> a chrysanthemum, my goodness, that would be... Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of florals are done like petal by petal. That would be a lot. Glass ornaments. Yep. You know what? Actually, I probably will do some glass ornaments, Leticia. Um, coming a little bit more closer to November, perhaps, or in November, um, when people are thinking about Christmas and that sort of thing. Autumn foliage. Yes, definitely uh, leaves and things like that. Yep. Dropping colors around trunks. Oh, great ideas. Thank you, guys. Um, all right, so maybe I'll just come in with a couple of extra darks in a couple of places here. You can see I'm just kind of dabbling around here. I'm trying very hard not to, not to get detailed in, in some of this area. Uh, I don't want to work anymore on the pumpkin until I dry it again, so I'm going to work elsewhere. I'm going to take a little bit more of this bluish, grayish brown, and I'm going to start punching up the darks in, in this stem. And if I paint with the side of my brush, I get a broken line. So um, if I paint with the point, I get, I get straight edges on both sides. If I paint with the side of my brush, I usually will get kind of a, a jagged line, which really gives this great texture in here, skipping over the, the texture of the paper. <laughs> oh 
Okay. Thank you, Irene. Um, yeah, so if you're friends on Facebook with me, um, like you can fire off a message there for me as well. If you are for some reason not able to uh, comment in the chat box here. Uh, at the beginning I used a gamboge hue. It's a gamboge hue that uh, is by Da Vinci. Uh, so it's pretty bright. It's this one right here, the second one. A um, little bit more like a, um, a little bit more like this yellow, right? So not a cool yellow, it's a warm yellow. All right, I think I am going to, that's fairly dry up here, so I'm going to wet this area up here. And I'm going to drop in some extra darks in here. And now this is where I'm going to start coming in with maybe, um, I think I'm going to use Payne's Gray. So I'm going to use some Payne's Gray because that'll get me to my darks quicker. I can do it with lots of layers. Um, and, and that looks wonderful because those under layers show through. Uh, but the clock is ticking here. I'm going to start losing people. So I'm going to come in and get some good darks in here. And as I come in with this dark, I am shaping the pumpkin. So I have to I have to watch that edge there that it is making sense. Don't want to get the uh, the stem wet but it's pretty dark along the edge of the barrel and then there's this band now I'll clean that up a little bit it doesn't have to stay that uh, that rough but uh, it's okay for now and I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, I'm going to use a little bit of this Payne's Gray on the stem as well. A little bit more with the tip of my brush, more like a calligraphy kind of thing. Kind of dabbling it in and getting a little bit more uh, depth into some of this uh, these dark shadows here. Trying to get a real kind of broken line going on there. All right. Now, one thing I have noticed as well is that where it connects to the pumpkin, um, it's it's got a really good dark right here as well. So, but it's not it, like all around it. Um, I am watching my drawing closely here to make sure that you know as it comes down into these points I don't seem to have as much I'm also not going above because it's where it connects to the uh, pumpkin itself so that's where it's dark and it tapers off and there we go All right, so what I'm going to do is, oh, thank you. Thank you, Sandra. I got your message. Um, all right, so I'm going to give this a quick blow dry, and I'm going to put a unifying wash on my pumpkin to kind of pull all of this together. I will mute myself so you don't have to plug your ears.
Okay, so I'm back and it uh, feels pretty dry now. Um, I'm just, I was reading through poinsettia. That's an awesome, awesome one that'll be great for Christmas. Uh, seed pods, Pat. Um, are you talking about like the milkweed uh, kind of seed pods, that type of thing? Uh, if you can clarify that, that'd be good. Um, thank you, Diana. I love, I love that you're here to watch me. Thank you. Um, okay, so now I'm going to take some of this orange. I'll mix up another sort of batch of it here. And I can wash this over all of this. So I'm going to dilute this down and all those layers will glow through what I put on here and really make this pumpkin look a little more lively. Right, so the colors seem a little bit more, <laughs> a little more natural with this wash over top. Would you agree? So, um, coming in with this wash just all over everything. I'm putting it on dry, but I could also have wet my surface first. I'm just working real fast and working my way around the pumpkin like a like a uh, clock. So it helps, I think, to sort of exaggerate your contrast because you can, you can always tone it down. If it's exaggerated, you can always tone it down. Uh, really hard to bring it back, though, if you lose it. So, you know, that's more the natural color that you're seeing on the screen of the, of the pumpkin, I believe. That's a little more, a little more like it. Okay, so nice, nice vibrant orange. It, it almost looks. Uh, a bit neon on my screen. Uh, it's really not quite that neon in person, um, but I think there's probably an adjustment I can make to my camera. Let me see here if I can adjust this so it looks a little bit more um, normal. Um, I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit. And maybe the contrast a little bit until it looks more like what my uh, camera is actually seeing. Okay, so that might be a little bit low. I can put my saturation up a bit. Okay, so I think I think that looks a little bit more like what. Um, what I've actually done. Um, I'm going to come in and, and tint a little bit up in the corner here too, uh, just because when you have uh, white, light and dark right next to each other like this and hard lines, it draws the eye in those places. And even though this pumpkin is so bright and everything, I just want to tone these down a little bit. So I'm going to wet all of this and just come in with a little bit more of that that blue and just sort of tone things down fade things off into that corner a little bit more even though in the photo those flowers are really light um, I don't want them that light I want them to fade away a little bit so that's why I'm coming in to to bring a little bit more blue in there. Besides, blue is such a great complement to uh, to orange. So the blue will look pretty with this. Look really nice together. 
and it, it'll give some of these a little bit more volume. Um, well, when I say volume, I mean that the, the flowers will have a little bit of shape to them. Okay, so I'm going to go my Payne's Gray again here and um, I'm going to get a few more darks back in here. And especially along this barrel, so wet. Um, So I didn't need to worry about that barrel being fuzzy before. I can make it I can make it a little crisper now. I can also fix up that band on the barrel, uh, which is actually a little bluish now that I'm looking at it. And uh, And I'll just take some of this uh, sort of dirty color here, this uh, mixture of stuff. And I'm gonna dry brush a bit here. So you can tell that that's a barrel. Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of that coarse texture and I, I did a dry brush with that. Uh, Got a little bit of a thing here. I want to separate this um, stem from the flower. I don't like them touching the way they're touching. It's like a creating a, a bit of tension, visual tension, a little bit of a um, tangent. So I'm going to just put in a few greens there drop in a couple of uh, darks Let's soften some of this and I think I think I'm just going to peel off this tape and see what we have it always looks good with the tape off And that'll be my painting today, I think. So, if you are still here, just give me a holler. Let me know if you're still here, and uh, I will um, I will start writing names. Let me find a paper. I'm going to need a hat or something too, I suppose. I'll just use a water bucket <laughs> without water. <laughs> okay, so we have Diana. We have Melody. Um, let me get my phone here too, because I know people are, are giving me messages that they are, got Irene. Uh, 
Bashika. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oops, my paper got wet, so it's kind of tearing, and I'm really rushing here, so I don't want to hold you up any longer than I need to. Uh, sorry. I'm going to need another piece of paper. Um, Bruna. All right, another piece of paper coming up. I don't know where I set it down, maybe over there. Um, okay, where did I leave off? Verna, Sharon. We've got Debbie. Leticia. Um, Debbie, Anne, I think you're still here, Anne, Stacy, uh, Debbie, I better put which Debbie here, Debbie Eckmeyer, uh, and I also have done. Sandra, Sandra, Sandra R. I will just put Sandra R. It's a long name. Now. Of course, if, if I draw your name, you're going to have to give me your address so I can send this. Um, all right. So I am going to zoom in if you do not see your name. And you should be on this list. You're still here. Just uh, you let me know if I missed anybody. And sorry about my horrible handwriting here. Um, Okay, so is there anybody I have missed? I don't want to miss anybody. I'm going to cut this up and throw it into a uh, into a hat. Still here, okay. Uh, looks like I've got everybody. Okay, amazing. All right, so I'm gonna gonna cut this up. This is fun. I'm going to need a drum roll. these pages out of an old notebook that had coffee spilled on it. <laughs> it's like not very good shape, but okay. All right, here's all the names. Let's crumple them up, toss them in, shake it up, do the whole thing. I guess put that on screen. Do this all legit and everything. Okay, everybody's all crumpled up. We're gonna shake it up.
drum roll. I have one, one name here. Verna. <laughs> Thank you, Rashika. You, you got the drum girl in there. Verna, you're the winner. Okay, so Verna, um, uh, you're gonna have to uh, send me your. Uh, if you're on, if you can uh, email me, maybe your address, and we'll uh, send you your pumpkin painting. Congratulations, and uh, to all you guys who stuck with me right to the end, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So we will wrap it up for today, and uh, Verna, you just uh, get in touch with me. Uh, I think I put an S behind your name, but there's no S. <laughs> but, uh, but Verna, it's you. So I think there's only one Verna here, so that's, that'll be you. So message me your address and I will send this off. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Uh, if you're in Canada, have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we will see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining. Bye.